All right, so in this video, we're going to be continuing to look at degrees of freedom and degrees of freedom analysis. So one thing I want to introduce is this um, general rule here. When you're writing independent equations, the number of independent equations that you can write is going to be equal to the number of species. All right, so rather than just accepting that, we'll look at a very simple uh, case here, and we can verify this for ourselves. So if we just have a um, three species balance and we call those species X, Y, and Z, um, and these species are going into a uh, separator, we have each of the species going in and each of them going out, X, Y, and Z, coming in, coming out. All right, so what are our options? Okay, so we can do an overall balance and that's just one equation and then we can also do a species balance and because there's x y and z that's three equations so we have four total there are four different equations that we could write but only three are useful only three are independent equations and we'll see why that is in just a moment so let's actually write these out in, uh, in equation form. So we have that the mass in is equal to the mass going out. That's our overall balance. And then we can do uh, species balance for x, y, and z. We have x written for us here that the mass flow rate of x going in is equal to the mass flow rate of x going out in stream 1 and 2. So we can write that for y and z. Okay, so let's uh, count off these equations. We have our one overall equation, two, three, and four. So now this is the part where you'll see why we only have three independent equations. So although we have four equations, um, there's only three independent equations because if you take any three of these equations, the fourth equation can be written in terms of the others. So, for example, equation one is equal to equation two plus equation three plus equation four. And that should make sense that the overall mass balance is going to be equal to all of the species balanced, balances summed together. Um, all right, so let's look at another simple example here. We have liquid water flowing into an evaporator at a rate of 10 grams per second, and we want to calculate the mass flow rate in grams per second of the liquid and vapor coming out of the evaporator. So we'll want to do a degree of freedom analysis and let's not forget our general rule that um, we have one species just water which means one independent equation so right away uh, this one you wouldn't necessarily need to do a degree of freedom analysis because you can see that there's two unknowns there's the liquid and vapor that we want to solve for but only one independent equation so we obviously don't have enough um, information here to fully solve this problem but let's write this out just to practice um, doing the degree of freedom analysis and writing our mass balances so our overall balance which is the only one we can write is that the mass in equals the mass out which is equal to, um, so the liquid water is being split into liquid final and vapor final. Okay, so these are our two unknowns. So the degrees of freedom is going to be the number of unknowns, two, minus the 
number of independent equations one so we have a degree of freedom of one so that means that one piece of information one additional piece of information must be given for us to solve this problem so currently with this right here we do not have enough information so they have to tell us something else so we can solve this problem all right so continuing this um, example um, let's just say we're also told or we're now told that the mass flow rate of the leaving vapor is 8 grams per second so we initially had 10 grams per second is equal to the mass flow rate of the liquid final plus the mass flow rate of the vapor final and now we can fill in uh, one of our unknowns eight grams per second for the mass flow rate of the leaving vapor so that's really straightforward to solve this problem we have that the mass flow rate of the liquid final is two grams per second and if we did our degree of freedom analysis we would see that the number of unknowns uh, right here is just one minus the number of independent equations which is the same as before one so zero degrees of freedom so that tells us that our problem can be solved so this is just something else to think about um, we were given that the mass flow rate of the vapor final was 8 grams per second but we could have also been given this information uh, different information and arrived at the same conclusion so they could have told us um, the liquid flow rate leaving and then they also could have told us the mass fractions so the mass fraction of the liquid and the vapor and they also could have given us relation ships so the interesting th thing here to, to see is that regardless of if they could have given us any one of these pieces of information and we would have arrived at the same conclusion so one thing to uh, note when you're doing mass balances is that all these are interrelated so whenever we're given um, this or uh, you're given a relationship or you're given a mass fraction you can use that information and um, substitute it into your independent equations and you'll arrive at the same conclusion alright thanks for watching